It was an unattended death. The person who passed away was uh, laying on their bed for a few days, and so the body decomposed quite a bit. The bio, it came down through both mattresses. Do you ever wonder what happens when the police leave? Crime scene cleaners are private companies that handle the cleanup after the police are gone. Spalding Decon is one of the nation's largest cleanup companies handling the aftermath of homicides, suicides, decompositions, hoarding, and much more. These are our stories. Hey, good morning. This is Chance Carrick. I'm the owner of Spalding Decon Palm Beach. We just got on site for a pretty big bio job this morning. It was an unattended death. The, the person who passed away was uh, laying on their bed for a few days, and so the body decomposed quite a bit. There's some blood and bio that goes straight down through the mattress into the subflooring. Today's a pretty big job. Um, it's probably going to take about eight to 10 bio boxes, which is a pretty significant amount for an unattended death, one person. So we got our hands full today. We're going to get uh, quite a bit of demolition done today. And then we're also going to do some cleanup around the house for the, the client. So it should be a pretty long day, but it's going to be a great day to help uh, another client out here in South Florida. Yeah, so the blood didn't go too deep in there, uh, just surface level, which is good. You know, we don't have to cut out underneath it. So that's definitely a plus. Less work for us, right? So as you can see, the bio, it came down through both mattresses. It leaked into this bed frame and it came through. If you look real closely, you can actually see some of the maggots. Uh, it looks like some, some urine, bodily fluids, and then obviously the bio. Um, but you can see there's maggots growing, crawling all around. They're feeding off of this. If we waited longer, they would actually grow and get bigger. They feed off of this stuff. So. What we're going to do is we're going to treat everything, kill all of this, kill all the germs, bacteria, anything that's living, get it all cleaned up, and then we'll have to tear up the tile because the blood actually can get into this grout line and it gets underneath the tiling. And it'll actually come, the smell will come back after a couple of days, weeks, or months if it stays under there. So we have to demo everything out, get it all cleaned up, and then we'll get it all sanitized and put it back together.
So you can actually feel the chemical reaction with the type of uh, chemicals that we use to clean this. It actually gets warm as it reacts with the blood. So my hand is actually a little bit hotter than the rest of the area. And as you're wiping it, you can feel the heat coming right off of it. mattress in the bio but as you can see it leaked through this platform and it actually got underneath the tile and you can see that that's all bio so not only do we have to remove this tile but we're gonna have to remove this platform also uh, you can see that's all blood and bio right in there and then it's also going to be here so we're gonna have to remove tile all out to here too And that would get real smelly over time if we didn't remove it. Woo we got blood all into this uh, wood. So what we have to do is we're going to have to remove this whole bed frame. Whenever wood gets into a porous uh, material like wood, there's no way to really completely clean it and get all of the bacteria and bio out of it. So we have to remove it, have to dispose of it in a proper way. And this will actually go to an incineration site and we'll get proof of incineration once it's complete. So this is actually blood. So it actually, blood finds a way to travel wherever the low point is. And so this was sitting right under the bed frame and it traveled all the way down to the ground and it was actually sitting on the ground and got right into the wood. You can see it right in the, uh, the glue. Uh, and there's no way to really clean that and get rid of it. So they, they, I don't know what they did, but they plastered the bottom of this. No, they didn't yet. plaster over here, but they did under there. You can see the whiteness. It's almost like a, like a caulk plaster that they layered on the ground. Not really sure why. Cover the wood maybe? Cover the wood and maybe make it waterproof, waterproof it, but it's interesting that they only did under there, but not right here or under where the tile. I got a drink for you if you want it. Huh. That's from two hours of work. <laughs> There's the subfloor right there. Underneath this should be, that should be the, the weather surface, weathering. Yep, there's the cement. All right, so this demo was a little bit more complex than we normally have to deal with. Uh, typically down here in South Florida, the tile is typically laid right over top of the cement subfloor. Um, in this situation, the whole floor is not only built up, but there's also the platform built up also. So we had to cut out the sub wood floor. You can see right here, there's still some bio remnants. Uh, but then underneath, you've got your, your weathering and you've got your subfloor. So we're gonna cut out the rest of this bio section and then we're gonna demo the rest of the platform because we've already had to destroy most of the platform. So once they go to rebuild this all, then they'll be able to lay tile flat across the whole floor, so. All right, so we got all the bio completely out of the, uh, out of the area where the, the body was found. Um, it soaked all the way through, all the way down into the subfloor. So as you can see right here, we had to tear out all of the subflooring, but all of the bio is completely gone. We're gonna get this cleaned up a little bit, and then the rest of the day we're gonna spend uh, demoing the rest of this platform so that it's ready for uh, the rebuild once we're all complete here. Um, but all done on the bio. You can go. <laughs> it's up now. <laughs> I'm gonna get it. Yeah. 
Martin, Martin. Oh, this is just a little Dremel tool. Whenever I have like little cuts that I need to make to finish up something, this is the best thing to use. I also use this for almost all of my drywall cuts. Super easy, um, easy to keep a straight line going. Uh, and you can get a ton of different blades. They sell like 30 different types of blades. So you can cut pretty much any type of material that you need with this thing. So the saving rate. All right, so we're wrapping up today. Um, right now we're just doing the final cleanup of everything. And it was a little bit more complex than we expected with everything that kind of played out with the way the bed and the, the bedroom was laid out. So uh, we're gonna wrap up today, get everything cleaned up, and then we're gonna be back tomorrow morning to finish the cleanup and help the client with a few other things around the house. Good morning, this is Chance with Spalding Decon Palm Beach here in South Florida. We're on day two of our bio and hoarding job. We're back on site this morning um, and we're focusing on getting the rest of the house cleaned up. There we go, where's the front? Where's the head? There we go, twins. So we got a bunch of Care Bears and Teletubbies. Um, they're all cloth-like material, and since the bio was directly in here, they're gonna smell unless you get them professionally cleaned and laundered. Uh, the client decided that they'd rather dispose of them uh, just to avoid that a little bit of a headache. So all of these types of little knickknacks, Teletubbies, Care Bears, all that kind of stuff, it's all gonna be thrown out uh, just because it's gonna be holding that, that bio smell a little bit uh, due to being so close to the bio for an extended period of time. And this is something that we found very interesting in e-machine. This is probably, I don't know, 20 years old or so. A uh, single standalone computer. They don't make them like they do anymore. the refrigerator into the uh, garbage can but the garbage people don't come until Monday so we, they asked us yesterday and we said absolutely because there's a lot of stinky food see maggots oh, what do we got here activity oh, boy. lots of activity All right, so we uh, we just started with the clean out of the house this morning. We loaded up the trailer in the back with all of the big items um, and a ton of trash bags. We probably have close to about a ton behind us. Um, and we're gonna go to one of the Palm Beach County transfer stations where we can drop all of our, our trash. So it's pretty quick and easy. We go in, we get weighed, we go up to the tipping floor, we drop all the trash out, um, and then we roll out and get reweighed and pay the fee, and then we're back to the job site. It'll take us probably about 30, 40 minutes round trip. Um, it's super quick and easy. All right, we just finished up dropping everything at the dump, as you can see. 
Uh, we dropped an entire trailer load, probably about a, a full ton, probably about 2,000 pounds. So we're about to head back to the job site, catch up with uh, the rest of the crew and get this truck loaded up again for another dump later today. Because we already had to cut some of the drywall over there for the bio, we're just going to flood cut the rest of this to see if there is a bigger mold problem. Um, that portion is going to get replaced for the bio, so just a, a couple extra feet won't make too big of a difference, and we'll be able to give the homeowner a good idea as to what situation you know is behind the wall. behind the drywall. Not really sure why they did that, uh, but we're gonna have to take this one out too, because this doesn't look good in here, but can't say I've ever seen drywall layered on top of drywall like that. There's in the wall. Someone's lucky little car. This fax machine. Hmm. There's a cat that was living out here and it peed all over the carpet. And I guess the glue that they use, the combination of the pee and the glue kind of made the entire carpet stick to the entire ground. So we're ripping it up, but you can smell the, uh, the cat urine pretty significantly along with a lot of the dirt and everything. So. Yeah. You should see. So we just uh, finished up the job here. Uh, the very last thing that we're gonna do is ensure that there's no lasting odors, um, both from the decomp of the, the body, but also some of the other things, some cat urine and uh, things like that. So we're gonna run a UV machine. It's gonna run for 48 hours. Um, no humans, animals, or plants can be in the home. It takes the oxygen out of the air, so um, it's extremely dangerous. We put a warning on the front door, um, but we'll also be running an air scrubber to make sure that if there are any lasting, um, you know, p particles in the air, um, that'll get it, all of the air cleaned up. So by Monday, uh, 48 hours, this thing will be ran, and all of the odor will be done, and we'll be completely done with this job. So. Um, it was a great team effort. I think the client's going to be pretty happy with the end result and uh, it was a good day's work. watching guys don't forget to like share subscribe and ring that bell to be notified of the next episode for more information visit any of our locations